Hey, Vinyl Community, it's Andy. Um, making my first video in a little while, first real video, because I picked up some stuff recently. Mainly, uh, I I uh, was just, uh, I'm home from work today because I was feeling really sick this morning with a headache and uh, not sleeping well. Uh, so I'm sitting here doing some math, some algebra for a project, and I thought, I'll make a record video to waste some time. Why not? Uh, also because I just got some records in the mail that I had been looking forward to. Um, and so I'll show those. Okay, well, the first thing I want to show, and I was so, uh, I was at the end of an year this past Sunday, and somebody sold off a collection of Thin Lizzy records. Uh, these were all, uh, every record they had was a UK Vertigo uh, pressing. So this is a first UK pressing with the cool comic book die fold or die cut, whatever that's called, the gatefold with the illustrations um, on the spaceship. I don't know what people call this, but you know this this label here with the little alien thing on it, uh, and this is Jailbreak. Uh, I don't love classic rock, you know. I don't. I mean, I'm not a collector of classic rock, but I would say Thin Lizzy. This record, especially, is one of my all-time favorites of the genre. And I think it's because there's 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 both a sense of humor on it. Um, I, quite, I never quite understood how songs like, you know, bands like Led Zeppelin didn't have more of a sense of humor in their lyrics when they're singing about, you know, kind of some nonsense stuff. Um, and maybe it's there, but I'm just not getting it. But I get this guy's sense of humor um, and, and playfulness. But then it also has some kind of almost like uh, Motown soul stuff on it uh, about equal rights and you know the um, po politics of the day because of course the lead singer whose name is escaping me was uh, African Irish but I don't know what you call it black Irish guy um, so that was cool uh, to listen to that all the way through on vinyl I've had it on CD for years and I've been saving to not saving I've been waiting to get a vinyl copy until I saw an original I just don't quite like the Mercury uh, label, and I knew you could find these uh, UK pressings for reasonable money. It wasn't uh, cheap, but it also wasn't uh, super expensive either. Okay, some other records. Uh, these are some ones I got in the mail today. So I got these, uh, I took kind of a gamble, because uh, the, there, a guy had a, a number of blue notes, and really I should have gambled more. Uh, a number of blue notes with just one photo and poor descriptions, just say like scuffed, you know, like you never know what that means uh, until you get the records. So this was the first one. This is the one that I had I had ordered, uh, I had won uh, right away as soon as I saw it up and had it had very few bids. This is Dexter Gordon, A Swingin' Affair. And this has, uh, you know, Sonny Clark on piano, Billy Higgins on drums. I try to grab everything with Billy Higgins. I love the guy. Um, cover is in, you know, it's in good shape. It's got some ring wear, uh, ass scratched on the back, and some pen marks. I don't know why people used to do that, but they did. Um, and so that's not super, super collector's uh, co uh, condition, but fine for me. And then I always love it when you get these. It's got the 25, uh, so you know, you know, unless they've switched them out, you know it's going to be good. And that's what I actually had seen on the uh, auction, he didn't say it was an original pressing, but or that it was a, a, a had an ear, but I assumed it did because of that. And then sure enough, you get it out, and it's a New York label, which is correct, I think, for this one. And looking at it, it's got stereo, Van Gelder, and it's got the ear. So it's a it's a first pressing, or at least an earlier pressing before the sale for Liberty, which is what I prefer to collect with Blue Notes, even above uh, reissues that may actually have s s better sonics, but, you know, I, I just like to have the historical uh, document whenever possible. Of course, sometimes that's not because they're thousands of dollars, but this wasn't. This was reasonably cheap, and I think, again, it's because the guy did not do a good job, uh, and he didn't have tons of reputation. So it was a gamble, but it paid off because that record is immaculate condition. I, I threw it on for a second, and it sounded great. Another one that he had up, and this one I couldn't tell if it was an original, because you never know with this inner sleeve. So this one, ha if you see a 27 years, it may or may not be an original. 
but it's one I've been looking for for a long time. This is Art Blakey Free For All, which, man, you got to love that. Look at that type. And this is actually in, uh, in shrink. Uh, it's got tape, but the tape's on the shrink. So I could always just remove the, the shrink and have a mint, I think, if I remove it. So that's awesome. Um, this has uh, this is the Jazz Messengers, Dwayne Shorter, um, Freddie Hubbard, you know, classic uh, Jazz Messengers lineup. Um, and it's got, what song was it on here that I really love? Yeah, it's Free For All. It's the title track, which is a Wayne Shorter composition. Such a great song. Uh, it's, got two, it's got two Wayne Shorter compositions, and then one Freddie Hubbard, and then I don't know the other. It's uh, Pensativa. I haven't listened to it, uh, that track. So I was super happy to get this, and I, even if, you know, I figured even if it was not an original, I'd be happy as long as it didn't go too high, and it didn't. So I was super, super pumped. I mean, just really surprised and happy to get it out and see, yep, it's an original. It's got the ear. It's got the New York label. I, I'm almost certain that's correct. It should be a New York label for the date that this was uh, released. Um, so it's got the New York label. It's got the deep groove. Everything is perfect. So that's awesome. I'm really happy that that worked out. And now I've got a record I've been really wanting for a long time and even a earlier uh, pressing than I thought I was buying. So it's always nice when that happens. It usually goes the other way, I guess. Um, okay, then a couple other quick ones. Um, I, I don't have many Bethlehem releases, so I've been trying to grab them when I see them. It's not always the coolest music. It's, it can be a little, um, can be a little uh, bland for my taste. But um, I saw this at End of an Ear for just like six bucks, and I figured it was worth it. Now, this isn't the deal of the century. If, if it was an original pressing, that would be a, an amazing price. This is like a, some later uh, reissue, on, but it's still on Bethlehem. It's not like a modern uh, bootleg or anything like that. And the main reason that I wanted to get this is that it has Art Taylor on drums, Mal Waldron on piano. And uh, anybody who's watched my videos knows I really, really love Mal Waldron. Um, one day I will get his prestige records. One day. Um, Okay, and then the other thing is I was at a conference just last weekend in Houston. It's called the Texas Monetary Conference. So it's not something that most people would be interested in, but it's part of my job because uh, I'm, I'm a macroeconomist. So I was at this conference, and um, it was just Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, which meant I had a couple hours Saturday to, to run around Houston, which I've never done before. So I went to a record shop um, called, like, the Lagoon. Yeah, like the Lagoon. And it was kind of a crate diggy kind of place. It had some really collectible records. Uh, I left a Yelp review uh, because, you know, it wasn't the perfect store. They didn't have like a listening station or anything like that. But they had some really collectible stuff. And, not, and the prices weren't, you know, discounted. They weren't like all-time score prices. But they weren't eBay prices either, which is what I think a record store should should do. Uh, so they had a copy of Stanley Turrentine and the Three Sounds uh, Blue Hour uh, original pressing on si with the um, with the sixty third address um, in really nice shape. The cover was near mint, um, and I see those going on Pop Psych for three hundred or more, and they were asking a hundred, which I didn't buy it because I didn't want to spend a hundred dollars on that record, but. You know, if you're in Houston and you and you like that, you like the Stanley Turrentine records. It's not a bad price, so maybe go grab it. So I got a couple records there. Um, a couple of them are just like kind of like soul comps, so I won't show those. Nothing kind of nothing that interesting. And actually, it turned out they were bad, worse shape than I thought they were. Uh, but the one I did grab, uh, sticking with my Billy Higgins, is this is a I think a late '60s um, uh, record by Lee Morgan. So it's got Billy Higgins, Lee Morgan, Cedar Walton, Reginald Workman. Um, this was, uh, I thought it was going to be Latin for some reason. I don't know if it because of this woman. It didn't really sound that Latin, uh, at least the first listen. And I liked it. I don't, I don't love Lee Morgan, but again, it was, it was reasonably priced. And 
Billy Higgins. I'm gonna get it. Um, and it's it's a Liberty Press team, but that's the that's what it should be. But it, and of course it does have Van Gelder uh, on it. So that's a uh, it's pretty good. Uh, again, I, I I grab the Lee Morgan stuff from time to time. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely listenable. And actually, my wife likes it. Um, she likes it a lot more than she likes you know. Dolphy, which is what I'm listening to now. Uh, okay, well, I think I have. Um, I'm going to Minneapolis, uh, it's where I did grad school. Um, I've been uh, going back. I go back every couple years, so I'm going back up there this weekend. Probably do some record shopping while I'm there, um, and so might might make another video early next week with some Minneapolis finds. Maybe I'll finally get a copy of uh, the Replacements uh, Stink. An original. That's the only thing. That, yeah, that's the only original replacements I don't have yet. So it'd be perfect to find a copy in Minneapolis. So see you guys. <laughs>